what all are the work that must be done to be on ventilator we must overcome the lung impedance to get the air inside we must overcome the ventilators imposed work of breathing we must also overcome imposed resistance from ppt now some of these things can be done by the equipment or you can actually put in the parameters that can feed one thing that we have no idea about is the imposed work on the ppt now we set the support for some of our more spontaneous breathing patients Suggest support values that we set may vary from eight centimeters to say twelve centimeters. But is the effect of these eight to twelve centimeters completely felt by the patient, or is there any attenuation to this uh, to this to this suggest support, which is being caused by resistance of the ET tube? Now, what happens here is we've understood that the single grade. of the imposed work of breathing is the ET tube during inspiration the lung pressures are significantly lower than the and we normally use pressure support to overcome this imposed work of breathing the normal thumb rule is that about 4 cm is the imposed work of breathing that is caused by the ET tube so if you have a pressure support that is set at a 8 Four of it is consumed just to overcome this resistance. So the automatic, uh, the the ATC, it overcomes this imposed work of breathing by actually adjusting the uh, the pressure support, and it the pressure support that you set is the actual pressure support that the patient benefits from. So that is very simply the principle of the ATC. It is a patented. technology from one particular manufacturer they have understood a problem and they have tried to overcome this by adding another uh, function called the atc now you can see your yes. uh, the poll on your screens have you used atc previously automatic tube compensation previously please click yes or no Hundred percent no. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, uh, I mean, very simply put, ATC is you you just feed in the ET tube size and the percentage of compensation you want, and algorithm then determine saying what is the additional pressure that the machine will generate without informing you to overcome this uh, work of breathing. so that is what an atc really does so that's about the atc now some of the drawback i mean atc is good because your energy cost of breathing is actually conserved because you're overcoming it by the equipments preparing a higher pressure but then what where or does it not work well now if you have airway secretions then your actual work, uh, the the pressure inside the tube may change or if you have extubation i mean after after extubation your upper airway changes may actually affect your work of breathing and these are unanticipated by and because i mean as even in this uh, we have seen that not many people have if the operator is not ganesh your voice is very is it okay now Is it okay now? Yeah, it's better now. Okay, sorry for that. Yeah, it's uh, better. Can can you re-explain this slide? I was I was saying that following extubation, upper airway changes may affect the work of breathing, and this is not anticipated by the ATC because ATC you you feed in the values once, and those are the values that. Also, as in this group itself, we have seen that many of us have not used. The operator may not understand this percentage of. Support that is that is required to overcome the work of breathing by the ET. So maybe adding this as another mode may sometimes result in some physicians over assisting or some physicians under assisting. So these are some of the drawbacks of the ATC mode. 
Now, there is one mode which has been understood to be the only true advanced mode of ventilation because most of the other modes are basically a derivative of either volume ventilation or a pressure ventilation. You have something called a proportional assist ventilation, which is truly an advanced mode because what this, equi this equipment does is you don't need to set all the parameters. You need to set the PEEP, the FiO2. You need to set what kind of patient uh, pathology is. Is it an obstructive patient, a restrictive patient, or a mixed patient? And all you have to do is then set the volume assist and or the flow assist. So what the equipment does is it looks at the patient's efforts, and then it either assists using volume or a change in flow to meet the minute volume requirements according to the compliance of that patient. It is like a cruise control where the accelerator keeps changing just to keep the speed constant. So here we know that this is the PEEP, this is the FIO2, this is my target that I want for this patient. And then I set the percentage of flow and the and their volume assist. Many ventilators in this country have still not started to use a proportional assist of ventilation. This is a mode that was first launched by Respironics in its non-invasive ventilation and then moved on to its invasive equipments. But uh, it is still not very popular in this, in this country. One thing that we have to take care of when using a PAV is always have a patient triggered backup ready because in case the machine is not able to understand based on the patient's compliance whether a flow assist or a volume assist has to be done there has to be a backup ventilation so this is i mean as we as we understand ventilation using graphs i've also tried to explain this using graph you can see here that with an increased patient effort the machine automatically increases the volume support for this patient to uh, meet the volume requirements of the effort. But if you, if you look at it, this is completely inverse to conventional uh, ventilation, where if the patient is making an effort, the machine will stop making the effort. Here, for a higher patient effort, there is a higher support by the machine. For a lower patient effort, there is lower support by the um, by the equipment. The other mode that I wanted to just, uh, uh, and this is my last mode that I will be speaking about, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A, is the NAVA, which is the Neurally Adaptive Ventilator Assist. This is a specific mode that is used in the Mackey equipments. And this, mo and this mode is basically a kind of an faster trigger. So you have an additional uh, sensor which is introduced and this sensor gives you the diaphragmatic uh, voltage, the EDI signal. So what this does very simply is as soon as your diaphragm starts to flutter, meaning that you're trying that the patient is trying to take an effort, there is a electrical signal that is being generated and that goes to the machine. The machine understands that the patient is about to take an effort. So it immediately starts the flow. And this reduces the work of breathing for the patient because the patient does not have to then displace a certain pressure or a flow for the machine to understand. Here from the diaphragmatic flutter itself, a machine is able to understand that the patient wants an effort. If you see how it looks on the screen, and this is specific to only Mackey, the higher end equipments, there is an additional sensor which is introduced and there is an additional uh, signal which is actually shown as a graph. And this, this signal is called the EDI. And this EDI is going to, is, is giving me the indication of what the patient's potential to breathe is. Is the patient going to breathe in the next few microseconds? So this is another mode of ventilation that we call the NAVA. It's more a, a, a more a faster trigger than a mode, but it is actually set in the machine as a mode. So I pause here uh, for about 30 seconds, and then I 
go to the last uh, sorry you are lost organish okay i was just saying that the last kinds of modes are the high frequency modes so you have three kinds of high frequency modes one is a high frequency positive pressure ventilation by jet other is by oscillator so if you look here this is an oscillator where you look at the mean airway pressure and then the machine actually gives you a breath rate as the, as as in in actually hertz with each hertz being 50 breaths a second and you can have breath rate going up to 3000 breaths so high frequency by oscillation can either be used for adults or for infants but you also have the high frequency of ventilation specific for neonate without the oscillators so you have high frequency without an oscillator for neonates and you have a high frequency with an oscillator for neonate and adult so this is a last type of ventilator or a mode of ventilator that we will discuss in the advanced mode of ventilation